Hello, dear students. My name is Emilio Morales. Today, I'm going to be your English class professor. Um, in order to get all senses, senses ready to this class, we are going to perform uh, some of brain gymnastics. I want, I want you to put your hands in this position, and we are going to close this one, the left one, where left for me, and the right hand for me. And we're going to, we're going to move the opposite uh, fingers in order to have a, a, a timing sequence, okay? I'm going to show you how, how you're going to do, are going to do this at home. Let me at the start. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to close now. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to the, the same the same process, but starting with a different uh, finger position. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. At home, I want I want you to uh, perform this. Repeat this, this sequence in order to avoid any kind of mistakes in the uh, finger position. Now we are going to uh, close both hands, performing the, the, the sequence. One, two, three, four, five. And we are going to repeat again. We're going to up the, the fingers and start. One, two, three, or five. With this, uh, with this process, mm, the psychologist said that we're going to activate uh, both em both uh, several uh, hemispheres, and we are ready now for this class. Sometimes when we we talk in different languages, as a native speaker of Spanish. We have some uh, words that sounds and sometimes are written in the same way that in the English language. Lo que quiero decir es que vamos a tener palabras que van a sonar y pueden llegar a escribirse del mismo modo en idioma inglés y del mismo modo en idioma español. Pero, aunque no lo crean, Pueden tener un diferente significado. So, how do we call these, these words? These words are going to be called cognates. Estas palabras van a ser llamadas cognados. Estos cognados, como dije antes, y recordando lo que es la conceptualización, van a ser palabras que se van a escribir del mismo modo o de modo muy similar al idioma inglés y en algunos casos van a tener el mismo significado y en otros casos no van a tener el mismo significado. Cuando se dice que tienen el mismo significado son llamadas cognados. Cuando no tienen el mismo significado son llamadas falsos cognados. So, this, these words uh, are going to be called cognates if, if already, uh, if they, they have the same uh, kind of uh, writing, if are writing in the same way, or if it sounds in the same way. For instance, uh, let's let's have this this example: uh, the word doctor. If I said uh, doctor in English, I can say it in Spanish doctor, and I'm going to be right writing in the same way. Let me share my uh, my screen in order to so you have a, a very good uh, example about this. Okay. Screen sharing now. Okay, I hope you can you can uh, watch my my screen. Okay, as as this uh, document said. The specific objective in this class is to know the meaning, to know the right meaning of a word through the dictionary and the context. So, um, this, 
in a, in an English in an English uh, lecture or a lesson or to be a, a simple text or any kind of word, uh, we're going to have uh, copies. We're going to get copies, and as I told you before, uh, there are some uh, words that are similar to another in our language. I mean, it's not only in Spanish language. Also, it's going to be found it in um, Italian or Romanian or Catalan or Portuguese, uh, different different languages. The importance to have a dictionary and perform a right traduction uh, implies that these words not always are going to um, are going to have the same meaning that the word in our language. So we're going to have the uh, true cognates. The true cognates are those words that are similar in a word in Spanish, uh, that is your native language. And the meaning, it's, uh, well, it's, it's the same. Uh, these are going to have some uh, examples. Uh, we're going to have this, uh, this, this, this table. The word could be history and the, the possible uh, see the possible meaning that our brain uh, all can uh, rely its history and real meaning its historia. Or we can have uh, the word uh, education, uh, the, 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 the possible meaning uh, its uh, education, and the true meaning its education. Uh, also, we can have introduction, introduction the possible meaning and the real meaning is introduction. Uh, we're going to have a natural or I don't know, personal. And those words are going to have the same uh, way of being writing. And the uh, real meaning is going to be the same. But uh, we also have uh, the false cognates. Uh, for instance, in Espanol, uh, false cognates are going to call are going to be called uh, uh, falsos amigos because it's not the the real meaning. It's not the same meaning. Uh, as as it said, uh, son aquellas palabras los cognados falsos que en español eh, se leen prácticamente igual o se escriben igual, suenan inclusive igual pero significan otra cosa eh, completamente aparte. Entonces, por ejemplo, tenemos lo que es la palabra realize. And sometimes realize uh, could, be, uh, could be a very confused word because in Spanish we can rely with uh, realizar. But uh, the real meaning is uh, to know something or darse cuenta de algo. Or we can have uh, figures, and in Spanish we can think uh, these words meaning it's uh, figures, figuras, but actually are uh, cifras. De hecho, son, son cifras, no? O podemos tener success, y podríamos decir es un suceso, algo pasó, pero realmente estamos hablando de lo que es el, el éxito de algo. Eh, donde hemos visto, por ejemplo, algunas cuestiones eh, cuando hacemos instalaciones de software, eh, tenemos este tipo de, de problemas. ¿no? You have a successful, successful installing. Y uno muy común al final es library. <coughs> eh, library eh, en español podríamos pensar es librería, pero en realidad es una biblioteca. ¿no? Cuando realmente biblioteca en inglés o bueno, no, cuando realmente este, pues librería en inglés es bookstore, ¿no? Ok. Eh, teniendo en cuenta esto, eh, vamos a, a realizar eh, un, un ejercicio, ¿no? Dice, el ejercicio uno es traducir las siguientes oraciones tomando en consideración el significado del cognado, sea este un falso cognado o un cognado verdadero. Then the number one, said the group of executives rest after the meeting. Well, in 
this sentence, we can note that it's the word uh, rest, but rest is not, um, no es restar, ¿sí? porque podríamos pensar que en español sería restar, pero en realidad el, el contexto aquí radica en que y si nosotros hacemos la traducción con contexto, eh, podemos decir que la eh, reunión ha terminado y que los ejecutivos van a descansar después de escuchar. They're going to rest. Eh, in the second, second sentence, we're going to have the, 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 the rest of people are waiting for them. Es, si lo relacionamos con la primera, con la primera, con el primer enunciado, the first sentence, eh, podemos ver que dice, el resto de la gente está esperando por ellos, está esperando por los ejecutivos quienes están descansando después de la reunión. Pero aquí rest, ya no estaríamos hablando de, de, de un descanso, estaríamos hablando de que el resto de las personas que asistieron a la reunión, eh, pues están esperando a los ejecutivos. ¿no? Entonces podemos notar que son dos palabras que son similares. Podemos pensar resta, resto, pero en realidad una habla acerca de descanso y otra habla acerca de la, la acción de, de esperar al resto de las personas. <coughs> eh, in, the, in the third sentence, We, we have this, uh, it said, he hurt his arm. He hurt his arm. In este caso, nos dice, se lastimó su brazo. Arm, brazo. Y tenemos la cuarta sentencia que dice, the officer's arm is true. The officer's arm is true. Arm is un cognado que eh, podríamos pensar es un arma, pero en la primera, digo, en, en, la, en el enunciado 3, nos habla de un brazo, del brazo de la persona, que sea lastimado el brazo de la persona. Y en el 4 nos habla de armar a la tropa, es decir, la tropa ha tomado armas para, valga la redundancia, estar armados y enfrentarse a algún enemigo. Entonces, Podemos ver que en el español podemos pensar que es un arma, pero en realidad estaría hablando de su brazo. No sé si tengan alguna pregunta. Bueno, en el ejercicio 2, eh, it said exercise to choose the, choose the correct word cognate to each sentence. Vamos a elegir la palabra correcta o el cognado correcto para cada enunciado. El enunciado número uno dice, Did you know that Chrissy got? Tenemos dos opciones. Tenemos embarrassed y tenemos pregnant. Dice, Did you know that Chrissy got embarrassed, pregnant on holiday in Ibiza? Aquí es importante eh, hacer notar una técnica cuando nosotros estamos eh, empezando a, a, a leer párrafos un poquito grandes, como por ejemplo puede ser este el ejercicio 2. Hay técnicas que es el skimming y el scanning. Es prácticamente echar un vistazo rápido a lo que es el enunciado para entender el contexto y encontrar algunas palabras y que nos puedan dar más información acerca de qué es lo que está pasando. Eh, en este caso, eh, yo puedo inferir que, eh, bueno, está, está hablando de, ¿sabías que? ¿Sabías que Chrissy eh, fue embarazada o pregnant? Pero aquí eh, tenemos que tomar en cuenta algo. Uh, embarrass puede eh, relacionarse con embarazo en español. Pero embarrass es, eh, embarrass es como estar apenado o estar avergonzado. 
Entonces, este, pues, lo correcto sería eh, pregnant. El pregnant es como impregnado, como, digamos, la traducción es así, pero es lo que corresponde, got pregnant on holiday. Pregnant sería embarazada realmente. Entonces, embarras es un falso cognado. Uh, the next sentence said the, the, the signature uh, <coughs> or subject, I had more, I had most, is math. Okay, uh, in this case, signature could be confused with uh, the word uh, asignatura in Spanish, but a uh, subject is the word with the right meaning for this sentence because the, the sentence talk about uh, math. Habla de matemáticas, está hablando de matemáticas. Entonces aquí sería the subject I had most is math. Eh, estamos encontrando cognados falsos. Now, the, the third center is begonia. It's a very kind slash sympathetic person. Um, maybe we can confuse sympathetic with uh, sympathetic, con simpático, digo, perdón, simpático. Pero realmente eh, la palabra adecuada sería kind, que es amable. Entonces, la, eh, el enunciado que era, quedaría Begonia, it's a very kind person. Begonia es una persona muy amable. On sentence number four, it said, keep removing slash stirring the soup the whole time. Uh, in this case, uh, removing could be confused with uh, the word uh, revolver. Puede ser confundida con la palabra revolver. Pero eh, steering sería la opción que deberíamos elegir. Si se dan cuenta, es otro falso cognado. On sentence number five, I couldn't agree more. That's a very sensible slash sensitive idea. We, we, we can find, we find that uh, sensitive is the right, uh, the right word and not sensible. Because sensitive is about the uh, sensibility. So that's a very sensitive idea. And we can have uh, any other uh, examples. I hope you can uh, finish this exercise in order to get more knowledge about the cognates. Um, now, we're going to identify the true cognates in each sentence uh, below in this uh, list. For instance, uh, the doctor told me that she is okay. As I told you before, doctor is an exact cognate. Doctor es un cognado exacto. Eh, los cognados exactos, aparte de ser reales, son una subclasificación en las que todas las letras de la palabra corresponden exactamente a todas las letras de la palabra en el otro idioma, ya sea español, portugués, etc. Entonces, el cognado aquí sería doctor. Ahora, la segunda sentencia o el segundo enunciado. This is an important hospital. In this case, uh, we can uh, have two cognates here. We're going to have an exact, exact cognate and a real cognate. And this is, for instance, important, importante, and hospital como hospital en español. Eh, algo muy sonado, por ejemplo, en redes sociales es cuando hacen las comparaciones entre los, los idiomas. Y 
hacen notar que eh, uno de los idiomas que eh, también me gusta mucho es el alemán. Y casi todos se han puesto de acuerdo para tener la palabra hospital o hospital eh, como un lugar donde curan eh, a la gente. ¿no? Sin embargo, es curioso como los alemanes le llaman este, Kraken, Krakenwagen, si no mal recuerdo. Entonces cambia por completo eh, el, el modo de ser el cognado, no hay un cognado como tal. ¿no? Pero bueno, eso es un dato aparte. Uh, the Imperial Hotel is good. Uh, in this case, in the, the sentence number three, we're going to have the Imperial Hotel is good. In this case, Imperial and Hotel are uh, two cognates, actually, uh, except, except cognates, because Imperial, pues es como Imperial es como Imperial en español y hotel, hotel es prácticamente hotel en español. The sentence number four is travel was perfect. Eh, tenemos un cognado que sería prácticamente como perfecto. Eh, y solamente difiere de tener la letra al final, como por ejemplo, básico, basic. O, o hay, hay más ejemplos. Entonces, le daría unos cinco minutos para que terminen eh, de la, del enunciado 5 al 10. Mm, you're going to have the, the chance to finish this activity or to complete it and send it by email to my, to my email address. And, well, this, this could be could be all for this uh, exercise. Now, let me show my, I'm going to stop sharing this screen. Um, I'm going to share what we are uh, learning today according to the uh, planning, the academic planning. Um, I, I'm going to, I, I'm showing, showing you this because sometimes when is the, are the last days of uh, school, Sometimes uh, the directives, uh, they asking for uh, some uh, evaluation of the academic or the teachers. And uh, let me show you. Uh, this is a class for a elementary school. I mean, it could be, could be for uh, other uh, levels, for instance, uh, high school uh, or senior high school inclusive. The subject is English, the second semester, professor's name, uh, the units, the object study of cognates that are words that um, we are going to, to have in different languages, not only Spanish. And uh, the importance also of the false cognates the definition, classification, the exact cognates, partial cognates, that are those, for example, that they're only missing one word at the end. The real cognates that are uh, well, the, the same uh, meaning, and the false cognates that are similar uh, in, in writing, but are different in uh, meaning. Uh, so this is the, the previous, previous knowledge that you need to have. The students will answer leading questions to know how many of them already have some knowledge about this topic. Because uh, I mean, every, every time we, we are reading, we can find these kind of words. Uh, the answers must be clear and concrete as the exercise that they already perform. Uh, the result will not affect the final grade of the, so the subject. Well, if, if in this case, we, we are not performing a uh, diagnostic uh, test, but could be possible to uh, do that in another uh, class with another topic. And the student has, in relation to the content of the subject, the resolution of the evaluation will take approximately 15 minutes. In, in order to perform the, the homework, could be very fast. And these are the, the topic one, the cognates and false cognates. Uh, 
in class could be done uh, to be uh, perform leading questions exercise about cognates and post cognates uh, recognition as as, as as we already very done that and um, well this presentation uh, it's going to be performed with it help i'm using uh, zoom zoom uh, zoom software and the bibliography it's uh teaching cognates for edition october 2014 2040, and the the author is uh, Ruben Moran. We give him his credit for for this lesson. Also. And let me show you another um, another exercise. I'm going to stop uh, stop sharing. There's another exercise for this this uh, topic. Let me let me show you. Wait, wait a little, please. Okay, we found it. We found the document. Yes. Okay, sorry about the delay. Um, in this case, uh, it, it's an easy exercise. Um, you must perform this. Um, we're going to review this uh, this exercise. It's about uh, false cognates. There are a lot of uh, examples here. For instance, we have the there is the exit word. In Spanish, we can rely it with uh, the word uh, éxito. Podemos relacionar la palabra exit, que es salida, con la palabra éxito. Sin embargo, el significado real es salida, eh, tal como menciona aquí. Y en el caso de, eh, de éxito, significado correcto o la traducción correcta es success en inglés. The real meaning of, of éxito en inglés es successful, exitoso. Eh, por ejemplo, parents. Parents is a, it's a common mistake to say that are parientes en español. Pero en realidad eh, estamos hablando de los padres. For instance, if you want to say, uh, uh, it's going to, the next Friday, it's going to be the, the parents meeting. No, el próximo viernes será la reunión de padres. ¿no? Parents son padres, no parientes. Eh, uno muy común, muy común en, en lo que es los libros, las tesis. El decir casi siempre actualmente tal tema. ¿no? Me ha tocado ver errores donde is an actually these days y pues no, realmente está mal. Eh, actually es este, en realidad o de hecho. Actualmente podríamos decir que sería currently el significado de cual. Entonces eh, voy a enviarles este ejercicio a sus móviles o a su correo electrónico para que lo vayan realizando. <coughs> Uh, we are almost closing this this class. Uh, I want uh, to review all the information of this uh, topic in order that to know in order to know if you understand or if I if I explain myself in a good manner. Cognates are going to be words or are words that are written in 
similar or almost sometimes almost exactly and in other cases exactly as they uh, are writing in a write in Spanish or Portuguese or Italian por ejemplo eh, voy a voy a compartir y voy a ponerles un Okay. Now I'm sharing the uh, blackboard or whiteboard. <laughs> it's a very good, uh, very good uh, software tool for teaching. There's a new, new board here. Those are for all my classes that I have done. Sorry for the delays taking too long. I, I'm just closing with this example. Well, I, I'm going to take some board, so some any, any other board. So it's a brand new version I didn't know it. <laughs> For instance, if, if we have the same, the, the word uh, burro, we can tell in English is a donkey. It's an animal. It's an animal, but this word in the Italian language means father. So when you want to eat spaghetti al burro, it's uh, just a spaghetti with butter. It's a very delicious, delicious food. But in this case, it's, it's Italian. And as I told you before, the exact, exact cognate are those that are uh, exactly the same word, doctor, yes, doctor. Or, for instance, the uh, the partial cognate basic is yeah basic or perfect is the yeah perfect. In this case, uh, only one word, uh, I said only one letter is missing. And the default cognate like the, the one, as the one I said before, burro, but the false cognates uh, actually Sí, no sería actualmente. This is not correct. Um, in the, the book of uh, Ruben Moran, Ruben said that uh, uh, persons who study linguistics or are, are studying uh, linguistics or are researchers of linguistics, um, they 
said that actually uh, this this kind of works it's not necessary to study just you need to have contact with the uh, people of other language other regions or their or other territories or the places in the world in order to um, know how to identify this uh, this kind of words uh, there are a lot of, of cognates uh, there is a pretty big uh, list of cognates and also false cognates in the book of Ruben Moran uh, and it's just to it's just necessary to uh, to do to have to have contact with with people of English English language who speaks English language. Well, this is all for this lesson today. I hope you can. You, 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 you can take uh, some positive uh, experience of this uh, lesson and well uh, have a have a good night and keep reading because reading and hearing uh, this music it's uh, are, are pretty good exercise for improve our English level. Bye, and thank you for your attention.